Let's talk a little bit about political obligation. What is an obligation, first of all? Well, Simmons gives us a fairly standard account of what an obligation is. An obligation is something I should do, regardless of whether I want to do it. Now, there are differences, uh, minor differences, between obligations and duties. Duties, for example, suggest the possibility of uh, enforcement, but let's set duties aside for now. If I have a political obligation towards a state, then I have a reason to follow the law simply because it's a law. Uh, a political obligation is an obligation to support or obey certain political institutions by virtue of them being my political institutions, and for no other reason. Simmons doesn't quite phrase it this way, but if I have a political obligation towards a state, then I have the reason to follow the law simply because it's the law. Not because the law has any good qualities other than the fact that it's the law of my country. On this view, the law is an independent source of obligation. Uh, what it means, or what that means, is that I have some moral reason to obey a law, even if I think it's wrong, misguided, or it's otherwise inconvenient for me to obey it. What these are are content-independent obligations, and they're called content-independent obligations because my obligations are independent of their content. That is to say, independent of what they're actually telling me to do. Now, many people will immediately reply that what gives me a special reason to obey the law, rather than any other obligations or supposed obligations I might have, is that I will be punished if I don't obey the law, whereas other kinds of obligations I won't be punished for not uh, living up to. But that's not the obligation in the sense that we're looking for. Uh, threats of coercion uh, from the state backed up by an implicit threat of violence certainly give me some what we call prudential reasons or practical reasons to obey the law, but they don't really give me moral reasons. Uh, might does not wake, make right. We're looking for reasons to obey the law because of the law that stem not for the, from the government's power to compel me, right? their ability uh, with weapons if need be to get me to do what they want me to do, but their right to compel me. Now this stems from the intuition that might alone doesn't make right. The rapist doesn't have the right to abuse his victim merely because he has the victim in his power. And the thief doesn't have the right to steal uh, all your stuff merely because he has successfully broken into a home undetected and therefore now has the power to take whatever he wants. So it's true, states have access to the means to commit violence, but this doesn't settle the question about how they should use those means or the power that they possess. So political obligations are a special kind of obligation uh, in part because they're obligations to a particular state, not just any state. Now it's possible that many countries have reasonable sorts of laws that are worth obeying, but presumably only one set of these laws, if any, is going to apply to me. Um, now Simmons also wants to note that just because we have uh, obligations, political or otherwise, doesn't mean we always have to fulfill these obligations. Obligations are therefore contingent and defeasible. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is that by contingent is that uh, they depend in part on what other obligations we have and the circumstance you happen to be in. And they're defeasible because they can therefore sometimes be overridden or defeated by other more important considerations, right? So if I have an obligation to, say, keep a promise, uh, there might be cases where uh, it's okay for me to not keep that promise if something much, much more important comes up, which doesn't mean I don't have a reason to keep my promise. It just means I have stronger reasons to do something else. Actually, let me come back. Um, to that. What, that. what this ultimately means is that sometimes uh, it's quite possible that we should ignore uh, some of our obligations. Uh, sometimes also our obligations conflict. Like you can imagine when one of your parents or one of your children commits a crime, uh, hurts someone else, so you know does something wrong, and you have to decide whether or not to turn them into the authorities. You have an obligation to protect and seek the welfare of your family members, uh, but you also have an obligation presumably to uh, not threaten strangers and otherwise uh, do your part uh, in a system of law and order or something like that. And so, again, uh, there may be times when obligations conflict, and these times can be very, very hard for most people. Okay. Um, what happens, though, if there are no political obligations? 
Uh, what happens if it's the case that there is no reason to obey the law just because it's the law? This is a, a possibility that Simmons um, sketches out uh, in the second reading from Simmons that you had to read. Uh, and it seems to be the case that just because there are no political obligations does not mean that people are free to do whatever they feel like doing. Uh, first of all, because uh, just because you don't have any political obligations doesn't mean you don't have any other obligations on the table. Uh, most importantly, uh, the law often codifies moral obligations that most people feel that we have. So you shouldn't murder people regardless of whether there's a law against it. right? The fact that there's a law doesn't perhaps even if you don't have any political obligations, doesn't give you an extra moral reason not to murder people. Um, so the fact that there's a law doesn't actually matter that much when, it, when the law is in fact codifying rules that uh, you have independent reasons uh, for obeying. Uh, there's also a, there's a second reason uh, that you might uh, obey the law even if you don't have a political obligation uh, to do so, and that has to do with uh, when laws actually promote good consequences. Uh, think about traffic laws, right? Uh, stopping on red and going on green, driving on the right rather than the left side of the road, obeying stop signs, and all the and speed limits and all the traffic laws that are out there. Um, even if there's no political obligations, uh, that doesn't mean you're free to put other people at risk with your driving uh, motor vehicle. Uh, sometimes, of course, uh, you might also have a good reason to disobey traffic laws when it would hurt no one. Uh, but note that you probably don't have a right to put other people at risk, and, uh, you know, so by and large, your lack of political obligations doesn't necessarily mean that you should never follow traffic laws. In fact, you should probably follow them almost all the time, except for extreme circumstances. Like we could imagine, for instance, uh, that you're on a country road uh, way outside civilization, and there's a stop sign and you can see for miles, and there's nobody, and it's 4 a.m., well, in those circumstances, it's probably okay uh, to roll through that stop sign uh, rather than coming to a complete stop. Uh, now, you might still have broken the law by doing that, but it's not clear that you've done anything wrong uh, by doing that, and you, you certainly haven't done anything wrong if you have no political obligations. Uh, but, you know, aside from these rather extreme cases, it seems to be the case that we might still have a obligation to obey the law, even if there's no political obligation to the state that is making that law. And as a final reason uh, why not having political obligations doesn't mean, you know, anarchy in the streets and you doing whatever you want to do, um, and this is sort of a rare instance, but uh, you might have prudential reasons to obey. Uh, the government, if you don't obey, is going to do some really bad things. Uh, here is an extreme example. Imagine a child tyrant petulantly threatens to kill your entire village, right, if you don't shine his shoes. Uh, now, this seems to give you moral reasons to shine his shoes, even though you may have no political obligation to do what he says, uh, nor does doing what he says bring about any good consequences. You're ultimately just going to shine his shoes, but not shining his shoes uh, ultimately leads to the death of, of hundreds of people Say, well, it seems like you have a moral obligation to shine his shoes, even though uh, there is no political obligation. Um, so, if we have no political obligations, the point is the world doesn't necessarily fall apart. It just means the law by itself doesn't tell us anything about what we should do. And, in fact, I want, to, I want you to note that this is true even if we do have political obligations. Uh, so imagine we do, in fact, have political obligations. Let's say we have the law by itself is a reason for obeying it just because it's the law. Well, we can imagine cases where it's going to be okay to break the law, even when we do have political obligations, either because the law itself, the content of the law is uh, unjust, or because the law simply doesn't cover the sorts of cases we're dealing with. I'll give you an example. Um, everybody who's ever uh, read a superhero comic or watched a superhero movie can probably uh, identify with this example. Um, think of Batman. Uh, Batman is a vigilante who operates largely outside the law, and uh, surely does many things that are illegal and probably even immoral if you or I do them. But Batman is Batman. He fights crimes that ordinary police is simply not equipped to deal with. He fills in the gaps where the law may not have any easy answers uh, or where the criminals are just uh, so sophisticated that ordinary law enforcement 
uh, can't cope. Uh, I'm not saying that everything that Batman does is morally justified, uh, but surely some of what he does is justifiable, and surely many people who read superhero comments admire and praise Batman for his vigilante actions, uh, rather than condemning him for uh, operating outside the law. And if that's the case, if we can justifiably uh, praise Batman for doing what he does, uh, then it seems to be the case that the law is not going to be the final word about what Batman, or perhaps any of us, should ultimately do.